Okay, so quick thing about how DNA is inherited. Okay, why is that there? All right, so my slideshow is, is being very goofy. I'm very sorry about that. Um, like I said, I tested it earlier, it was fine. Okay, so this is basically how DNA is inherited. You have 50% of your DNA is from each parent, and 25% approximately is from each grandparent, and so on and you keep dividing in half for each generation back. So I'm gonna have about 12% of DNA from a great-grandparent and 6% from a great-great-grandparent. And each child born to a couple will have a different random recombination of the parent's DNA. Here's a chart that kind of tells you exactly what I just said, that you're taking the number in half from each generation. So there's you, you have 100% of your DNA, you got 50% of each parent, 25% of your four grandparents, 12.5% from your eight great grandparents. And this is all approximate percentages after you get to the grandparents. So what is your ethnicity estimate really telling you? So what is that pie chart really telling you? It's telling you that at the continent level, this is correct. So if it tells you you're European, then you're European. If it tells you you're part African, then you're part African. Um, it can reflect your ancient ethnic origins from thousands of years ago. So if something weird like Scandinavian pops up, that's probably from thousands of years ago. Um, large percentages of DNA are fairly accurate. Your DNA from your distant ancestors will not be detected by this test. So um, when you get back to like your sixth and seventh grade grandparents, you're not gonna have very much of their DNA. You're only gonna have a little sliver of their DNA. And it's gonna kind of wash off of your, um, of the ability to the, of this test to detect it is going to, is not going to be there. So this test can't detect really tiny amounts of DNA. <coughs> Native American and African DNA can wash out of your results after a few generations, and I'll talk about that. And full siblings have different ethnicity estimate results due to random recombination. So continent level. So as I was saying, your DNA is going to usually be, be correct at a continent level. So the continents are Europe, Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Australia, and Antarctica. So when the test tells you you're European, yeah, you can, you can say, yeah, I'm a European. Um, if it gives you sub-regional or subcontinent results, like Northern Europe, Southern Europe, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, those are usually pretty accurate too. Specific countries may be incorrect. And this is because of very, many different reasons but there was a lot of movement of people, there was a lot of intermarriage between different people groups, there were wars, there was trade, there was a colonial system where, colonial, where countries from Europe colonized um, different countries like India and Australia and even America, you know, we were a colony of England at one point. Um, shifting boundaries, there are t shortcomings to this test. Basically, this test is really not able to be that specific on a country level. Um, and sometimes it detects your ancient DNA rather than your most recent. So you think that you're one thing, but then it, the test kind of tells you another thing. So ancient DNA, let me just briefly talk about that. So you should recognize some of the ethnicities in your from your recent family history. Like I said, I'm a quarter Eastern European, and so I did see that on my results. I saw 17% Eastern European. So I recognized that, and I said, yeah, I have a grandmother from Eastern Europe, so that makes sense to me. But then you're gonna see some parts of your results where you're like, I don't recognize that at all. Like I said before, I, don't, I didn't recognize the Scandinavian. I have no idea where that came from. I think it's probably ancient DNA, as I, as I said before. It indicates a, pros a possible earlier location for my family or movement of peoples around. So like the Vikings came down out of Scandinavia at some point and intermingled with the people in Great Britain is what I'm, was what I'm 
thinking because I, I know that I should have shown a larger percentage of Great Britain than I did, and so I think that that's where that's coming from. Okay, so here's somebody who, let's say you have four immigrant and grandparents, all from Italy. Wouldn't you expect that your ethnicity estimate would come back 100% Italian? I don't think that happens very often. Um, and if we're talking about that ancient DNA, where were those ancestors living thousand years ago? Were they, could they have been in Scandinavia? Could they have been in North Africa? Could they have been in Greece, Middle East, Britain? Here's an example, here's, an, here's a map of the Roman Empire. So this is where Italy is, this Rome is part of Italy. Um, and you can't really see it very well. But here's Italy, see here's the boot down here. Italy is just this part of the Europe right here. But in 117 AD, basically about 2,000 years ago, the Roman Empire, which was centered in Rome, covered all this area. This is Spain, this is Britain, this is France and part of Germany, this is over here into Eastern Europe, this is part of Asia, this is Africa, this is the Middle East. So you can see that Roman Empire was very different back then. And you can see that a lot, a lot of those groups could have intermingled with each other 2,000 years ago. And some of them could have stayed in Rome. They could have, they could have you know, been sent to Rome from the outer outposts of the empire. And stayed in Rome, intermarried with traditional Italian people, or what we think of as Italian people, and that's why. Okay, we have another video, which I hope will play. Um, okay, now I'm gonna have to do that again. So, we're gonna have to do a little finagling here to get this to work. So what did we learn from that commercial? Well, we learned that this guy thought he was Italian. And he, let's see, is this gonna show right? Yeah. Oh. We learned that this guy thought he was Italian, but he tested his DNA and he came back with only 16% Italian. And so he and his wife looked on Ancestry, they looked at the genealogical records, and they found that he had some Eastern European ancestors. And then he holds up this picture and says, this is a guy that you know, is Eastern European in my ancestry. I never knew about this. So the message is, test your DNA and find out that you had these unknown ancestors that you had no idea about. <laughs> okay, now I like this commercial a lot better than the first one. Um, it shows that he's both Italian and Eastern European. It doesn't set it up as a like either or situation. And it also emphasizes that they did genealogical research that confirms the ethnicity results. They didn't just hair off and say, oh wow, we're, we're Eastern European, and then they have nothing to back it up by finding records of the names of the Eastern European relatives. And so overall, this is a much better commercial. I still kind of laugh at it because you want to always research your results. Like I said, don't go hearing off. So Eric and Catherine should look at maps of Italy. I mean, they should look at maps of Italy over the years. They should read some histories of Italy. Um, if they do that, they will learn that the borders change constantly due to wars and invasion and so on. 
and World War I and World War II were especially, um, especially had a lot of effects on that part of the world because Italy was involved in both of those wars and the boundaries were redrawn. Eastern, European, Eastern Europe and Italy border on each other, so it's really not surprising to me that an Italian has Eastern European DNA. So anytime you, you know, a, your country of origin has a border with another country, you've got to think there are people going back and forth across this border and they're probably intermarriage and probably mixing of those two groups. So this is just pointing out what, that just said, what I just said. Here's Italy before World War I, and here's the border between Italy and Eastern Europe. And after World War I, the border is changed. And basically this whole part here was Italy before the war, and now it is part of these other countries after the war. It's got some, part of it went to Austria, part of it went to Switzerland, and part of it went to Yugoslavia. So not surprising that poor Eric was part Eastern European, <laughs> but, but the, the test did illuminate that for him, and maybe his family didn't have a tradition that that was the way it was, or maybe that was hidden from his family. Um, sometimes it's not popular to be a certain ethnicity, and so the family kind of is quiet about it. Okay, small and large um, percentages. So. Basically, I'm gonna tell you that if you have a small amount of an unexpected ethnic group in your DNA, it may be nothing. So for instance, here's somebody that has Asia Minor, my, less than 2% of Asian my, Asia Minor DNA. This could be really that they have 2% of Asian DNA, or it could be what they call noise or statistical coincidence. So don't get excited about small amounts of different ethnicities in your DNA. Could be something, may not be. Large amounts of an unexpected ethnic DNA can't be ignored. And when I say that, I mean from a different continent. So if you think that you're European and all of a sudden you get a 25% Asian result, that is true that the test is not going to be off by that much. So 25% Asian, you thought you were European, this is something to be, to take seriously. This is actually a real result. Um, and often a 25% result would mean that one of your grandparents was full Asian, and I don't know how you wouldn't know that unless you were adopted or you know something like that, or if there was an estrangement in the family. Okay, then there's the washout. So this is gonna be just statistical right now. So let's say you had, so second great grandparents, you're gonna have a number of those. You're gonna have, let's see, let me go to my next slide. You're gonna have 16 second great grandparents. Hmm. So let's say that one of them was African and he was 100% African and then the other 15 were all Caucasian. So you've got this one African person in your family tree. Your parent is going to get about 12% of that African great-great-grandfather's great -great DNA. You're only gonna get 6%, and your child's only gonna get 3%. So you can see how the numbers are dwindling, the percentages are dwindling. With each new generation, it goes in half. So eventually, this percentage will be so small, it will not be measurable by the test. It doesn't mean you didn't have that, that, great, that second great grandfather who was African. It means the DNA test could not detect it. So this could happen to you. And this is a lot, I think, of what happens with some of the people who say that you know, they were Native American. Uh, perhaps they're, they're so they had a Native American ancestor, and it was probably farther back than the second great-grandfather. Let's say it was a fourth or fifth great-grandfather. And it was maybe, they weren't 100% Native American, maybe they were mixed with Native American and, and something else, Native American and French, or Native American and English. And so that can wash out of your DNA pretty quick, because you're, just, you're, you're not inheriting that much DNA from a very distant ancestor. 
So again, this slide I showed earlier, it's just showing how much DNA you get from your various people. And you can see by the fifth great grandparent, you're only having 0.78% of their DNA. So it's a very small amount. That's still probably detectable, but it's getting to the point where it's not going to be detectable. Maybe this test in the future will be better, but right now that's kind of a cutoff where you know, you're less than 1% of that ethnicity and it's not gonna show up on the test. So this often happens with, with people who have distant, far back Native American or African in their, in their trees. It's not gonna show up on these results because of you know, the fact that you, it's washing out. <coughs> And if the ancestor was mixed and not fully native, it's not, it's gonna wash out sooner. Now this is just an example of the full, the full blooded again. So this would be, let's say, okay, these are your great grandparents. You've got eight of them. This is you down here. Let's say that this color here, this great grandparent is represented by Native American DNA. So this guy here is fully Native American. His wife is something else, so she's the light green. So all these colors represent different ethnicities. <coughs> so his wife is something else. So they each pass on, you know, one chromosome to the child, this grandfather here. He's got half Native American and half something else. Then when you get down to this, this fellow here, who's the grandson, He's got a mix of the light green and the dark green, so he's only this much Native American. By the time it comes to you, you've added in all the DNA from these other grandparents over here, mm -hmm. and you have just a tiny little bit of Native American already, and this is just a couple generations, because only one of your great-grandparents was Native American. So it just, it, it's kind of a random amount, and it recombines with each further generation and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So a word about the recombination. So every time your parents had a child together, that child inherited a different 50% of each parent's DNA. So your full siblings are gonna have different DNA results than you do. Only identical twins will have the exact same DNA from each parent. This is called recombination, it's also random. So. You know, every time your parents get together and had another kid, it was just randomly picking 50% of each of their DNA and plopping it into that kid, basically. That was very unscientific, sorry. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean. <laughs> well, you would have to really compare with your siblings. Um, my mother and her brother both did 23andMe, and they almost were exactly the same, and I was really surprised. My dad and my aunt have done it, and theirs are pretty different from one another's. And they're, they're both full siblings. Um, each family will be a little different. Um, here's an example of that. So this is pretty artificial. So you've got the two parents that have really, they only have two ethnicities according to this graph. And this is just to show you this example, really. So the mother is about three quarters Ital Italy and Greece and one quarter Western Europe. And the father is almost all East Asian. So he's only about 75% or 80% East Asian and a sliver of it Italy and Greece. So let's say this is you, this is the first child. And so you are almost half East Asian from your dad and a tiny sliver of Western Europe from your mom, and then your Italy and Greece, probably from both parents. Mm -hmm. But look down here at some of these siblings. The siblings could possibly have any of these combinations. Hmm. This sibling here only has a really tiny amount of Western Europe, and this sibling here has a lot of Western Europe and very little Italian. So this sibling here got almost all of the Western Europe from the mom and almost all of the East Asian from the dad and just got a tiny sliver of Italian there. So you know their, their ethnicity estimates are gonna look really different. And 
The autosomal test is going to show you of your full siblings, and that's under the matches section that I was telling you about. So you're looking at the, your, your autosomal DNA results always have two parts to them. One part is the ethnicity estimate, and the other part is your matches. And so you will be able to tell from your matches that this person is your full sibling. You'll share enough DNA that the test will tell you this is your full sibling. Or it'll tell you something like that. It'll say close relative, and then it'll say possible full sibling, and then it'll give you some other possibilities as well. So, you know, don't think that you're not siblings with somebody just because of your ethnicity results. It's kind of like the paternity thing. Don't try to figure out your paternity by looking at the ethnicity results. You've got to combine it with other information. Okay, so real quick, how does each company calculate their, their ethnicity estimate? They all do it a little differently. And so you can always find this information on their website. So whatever company you tested with, you can go on their website, look for the word reference population, look, at, look under the word ethnicity um, estimate, try to you know, find out, usually there'll be some help screens where you can just click on help and it will tell you more about it. They each do it a little differently. And that's why if you tested with all four of the companies, you would get different results. So Ancestry, I'm gonna go into Ancestry because lots of people know about Ancestry. So here's my Ancestry again. And you can see right away, if you click up here in the corner on that question mark, you would get a lot of information. Um, Ancestry has really good help um, screens. So if you want to try to find an explanation for your ethnicity results at Ancestry, the, the, the information is there. It's easy to access. So as I said, there's no specific genes for ethnicity. They're going to compare your results to those of their 26 reference populations. So if your result was 55% Irish, this means that around 55% of your DNA was most similar to that of an Irish person in the reference population. So they've only got 26 reference populations. It's not a lot considering how many ethnicities and countries there are in the world. So they're looking at your DNA and they're saying, well, it's most like that of an Irish person. 55% of it is most like that of an Irish person. So we're gonna call you 55% Irish. That's how they do it. So the people on the reference panel have deep ancestry. I have AJ Harding, Sheila Bates, Brooke Hill, um, Janine Cheesebrew, and Mandy Gullring. Okay, for 240, I have one more. Michelle, you're my favorite girl too. <laughs> Thank you guys. I just love being here and hanging out with all of you guys. Okay, I'm going to name those one more time. AJ Harding, Sheila Bates Otto, Brooke Heel, Janine Cheesebrew, and Mandy Goring. Please make sure you go for that on Google Doc for that pair within five minutes, okay? Thank you, AJ. If you don't know how to get to the Google Doc, like my page, Leggings Live with Hannah. Was that six? All right, all right, let's do 130. If we hit 130 viewers, we are gonna give away a free pair of leggings. So let's take a second and go share to all of our pages, share to your personal page, share to all of the groups you're in, your yard sale groups, your exercise groups, your, I don't know, your, your beauty groups, whatever group it is, share there. And so if we hit 130 viewers, we're gonna do a share winner. Um, I have no idea what it is compared to that company, but I will give you our sizes. A one size fit size is zero to 14, curvy fits 10 to 24, and extra curvy fits 18 to 32. My admin just went ahead and pinned that comment. So whatever your pant size is is another store, you just carry it over here and you apply it. Okay, and Nan Robe Nancy, you got that last one. Nan Robe Nancy for two four zero. You got that very last one. Yes, please 
groups you trust. Okay, Nan Rub Nancy 240. You got that very last one. Go ahead and fill out a Google Doc for that pair by hitting the blue shop now button. Okay, are you guys ready for the wall? Thank you. I can tell you guys are all sharing. We're at 110 viewers already. If you want to win a free pair of leggings, keep sharing to all of your pages and groups. It could happen to you. We are Legalicious. $20 free shipping in the U.S. Buttercream soft leggings. They're 92% polyester, 8% spandex. Okay, let's go. One size emojis. Love these beautiful emojis. You've got every mood in here. You've got happy and sad and like a sick face. And right here, you have a silly Santa and then a happy Santa. So this is your Christmas emojis. We are doing everything on the wall right now. It's all gonna come down. Two in the one size. One size fit size is zero to 14. This is your emoji Christmas, your Christmas emojis. <gasps> Yay, we did it. We hit our first share goal. Thank you everybody for sharing and inviting your friends. Hurry and get those last minute shares in. We're gonna grab our share winner in about five minutes. So get those last minute shares in, okay? Okay, one size emojis. Wanna know which one my favorite is? Where'd he go? Oh, here he is. This one. He is just cheesing and happy, just like me. $20 free shipping in the US. You must be able to pay within 24 hours. I've got two in the one size. One size fit size is zero to 14. If you would like to purchase this pair, please comment hashtag or sold or mine with the number I hold up to the leggings. They're always $20 free shipping in the US. Please comment hashtag 166. If you would like to purchase this pair, I've got two. Two of the one size emojis. 166. Thank you everybody for sharing. 166. Okay, Honolly Healy. Oops. Honolly Healy and Renetta Mendoza. Congratulations to Hanalee and Renetta for 166. Please go fill out the Google Doc to purchase that pair. If you're not sure how to do it, I'm going to tell you right now. Go to my page, Leggings Live with Hannah. That's Hannah, H-A-N-N-E. Um, like and refresh the page and then click the blue shop now button at the top of the page. That blue shop now button is going to take you to my Google Doc and you'll enter in all of your information and then after the show we'll send you an invoice to the email you provide and you will have 24 hours to pay. Okay, so this pair goes to Hannah Lee Healy and Renetta Mendoza. Please go fill out a Google Doc for that pair. Hannah Lee and Renetta. Thank you for sharing. We are just climbing now, guys. Awesome, keep getting those last minute shares and invites in. We are gonna grab our share winner in another couple minutes. Okay, I love this pair. Three in the curvy. They're always $20 free shipping in the US. This is your curvy advent calendar i love this pair it's so fun you have gingerbread men and santa and candy canes and christmas trees and wreaths it's a perfect christmas pair curvy fit sizes 10 to 24. i've got three in the curvy if you would like to purchase this pair you're going to comment hashtag with the number i hold up so I've got three in the beautiful advent calendar. Curvy, fit sizes 10 to 24. If you would like to purchase this pair, please comment hashtag 241. These are perfect stocking stuffers because you can roll them up real small and just stuff them in there. 
perfect stocking stuffer. Two, four, one. This is your curvy advent calendar. Dana Byler, Nancy Gautier. I never know how to say your last name, but I feel like it should be fancy. Gautier, you know? Two, four, one. <laughs> Dana Byler and Nancy Gautier for 2-4-1. Please go fill out a Google Doc for me, okay? Dana and Nancy, 2-4-1. I've got one more. I know, Kimberly, I've got so many. I've already started wearing them because I just think they are so cute. Okay, Gother, Gother. Nancy Gother. 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 Okay, two, four, one. Go ahead and fill out that Google Doc for me. I have one more. Curvy fit sizes 10 to 24. All right, who's ready? So if it's show, if you're seeing people comment hashtag with the number before I hold them up, you're on a lag. So um, try logging out and logging back in or refreshing the page or closing your app. <gasps> Barbara, you are our share winner. Barbara, I'm so happy that you won. Are you here? Barbara, okay, let me know. Are you a one size or a curvy? Barbara, are you a one size or a curvy? Barbara won a free pair because she shared and invited lots of people. Okay. Dana. Dana. Are you ready? Did I grab the right bag? Nope. Okay, now I did. Okay, Barbara, are you ready to see your free pair? Da, 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 da. <gasps> Ooh! Look at these. It's a beautiful Christmas pair. It's your red and pink Aztec. Beautiful. Congratulations, Barbara. Barbara, go fill out a Google Doc for me and in the description, please put that you are the share winner. You want the bag. Okay, Barbara, go fill out a Google Doc and in the description, put that you are the share winner. Congratulations, girlfriend. Thanks for being an awesome customer and supporter of my page. I love having you here. Tammy, there is a share button at the bottom of the page and you can share and invite people um, with that button. Okay, let's do this pair. Gorgeous pink and blue mousse. This is a one size. Oh, wait. 